So today we have the time lapse of our mistake truck. And if you're just tuning in and you don't know anything about it, there's a link to the playlist up above with all the real time videos. But this is the time lapse and some extra footage that I didn't put in the other videos. And the time lapse camera was running pretty much the entire time I was doing the job. So you'll get to see some stuff you didn't see in the other videos and from a different perspective. So first thing we'll start off with is how I got it on the trailer. Everybody asked how I got the other truck on the trailer even though I couldn't get it off. This is how. Loader's struggling a little bit. Truck's a little heavy for it. This is my first time seeing the truck in person. I know, all the experts say I should inspect everything, but when you bid on hundreds of cars a week, you can't inspect them all. So sometimes you take a risk. And right now is where my day went bad. When I figured out that the trans and transfer case was broke. So now we're back at home. We're going to take off all the parts that they put on after they doctored it up like the 1500 headlight. Original grill, what's left of it. Cut out some zip ties. Nothing says quality like some zip ties. Found some spare parts. So I got a bonus bumper bracket. It can't be the original, it's not mangled enough. And there's one on the bumper that's in here. I think they just stuffed it in there to try and cover up what's back there, in case anybody at the auction looked at it. Now that that's out of the way, we can see how bad it really looks. So what caused all the damage was the original hit to get right on the frame rail. Shove this rail back and the drivetrain was still coming forward. That's why everything broke. So now we have our come along attached to the back of the truck. I'm just going to pull that core support out a little bit so we got a little room to work in there and that the fan isn't hitting the radiator anymore. I guess that's far enough. We got a little space in there. I don't know if it's going to start. This is the ECM. It's got a nice big dent on it. But the motor is free. I was able to get the bolts out of the torque converter with our new inspection ports. I powered it up, but for some reason it doesn't crank. I'm going to keep looking for some wires that are broken. Since the motor turned over, I'm kind of optimistic that it's going to be okay. There's nothing broken other than the oil filter, so even if it does start, we're going to have to shut it off pretty quick. The oil filter housing matches the oil filter, so if it was just a filter, I could screw one on, but unfortunately, the housing looks just as bad. And so now we're going to start taking it apart, pull the hood and fenders off, and get ready to pull our cab off, loosen up the bed. So we can get a better look at what's underneath the cab, how bad the motor and trans really are. Disconnect the emergency brake cables, body bolts, now we're taking the bed bolts off. Take off the running board, which was also the bed bolt or body bolts. Set it on a jack stand to make it a little more level. Lift the cab off. To force the steering shaft out because 
doesn't want to come out, take off all our brake lines and power steering lines. Our cab's out of the way. Take the truck back down to our storage yard. Move the cab out to the side so we can start stripping out our parts cab here. We're going to use as much as we can off our original. So we're just going to take everything off of this. We have to change the wiring harness, the carpet, the dash. So we'll strip it down to the bare cab. The heater box is also different, so we're going to have to change that. the dash pad off and take the actual dash assembly off. Take the heater box out. Pedal assembly. All the wiring and e-brake. Take the headliner out. We're going to need to reuse that. Now there's our original cab, we're going to pull the doors off, strip this all down, I'll take the seats out, take the center console out, take the sill plates out, and back seat, take the seat belts out. Pull some of the stuff off the headliner and the B pillar trim. Take the carpeting out. I'll right, pull the rest of our headliner out. This one's no good. It was torn when the airbags went off. I'm going to pull the windshield out, make it a little easier to get the dash out. There's our two cabs. The original one is the one I'm working on right now. So we're getting everything we can off of there so we can swap it into our new new one. Pull out our pedal assemblies. Put the insulation on. That was actually different. So everything had to come out to change that. Put our rear insulation on. Put our seat belts in. I'm going to swap the wiring harness over. I'll put the antenna and the upper harness on. I'll put our passenger airbag in. The curtain. The driver's side curtain. Put our rear seat belts in. I'll we'll put our headliner in. Now we're going to swap our dash over. That's the original dash out of the parts cab. We're just taking the wiring harness off of it. The metal part and plastic was broken on our original, so we're just going to use reuse that. But our wiring harness is different, so we had to swap everything over. Now because our heater box is bad and we have to take our parts truck apart, we're not going to be able to put this back in. We'll do that a little bit later when we take our parts truck apart. Like right now. Pull the hood off, pull the grill out, take the bumper off, headlights, I'll take the driver's door apart, and then take it off. Put it up on the lift, because once I take these fenders off, it'll no longer be drivable. Take the fender liner out, I'll take the fender off. 
with some junction blocks up there, some electrical wiring. I'll take the passenger fender off. One's a little easier. Not as much stuff up there. I'm going to start disconnecting the cab, take off of our brake lines and our power steering lines, steering shaft, some ground wires, I'm going to undo the emergency brake cable and our body bolts, get our shift, shift cable out. Uh, ready to lift the cab off. I decided to take the steering column all the way out. Relax a little bit underneath the dashboard, I guess. I'm getting myself into a game of Tetris. Uh, we got our new cab. There's our original engine. Probably shouldn't have put the cab up there because it did make me have to play Tetris. Disconnect the front drive shaft. Take off the mounts. Disconnect everything from the cooling system. Hoses for the trans, antifreeze, and oil. Decide that's not going to work. So, try it a different way. We needed to support the back of the trans, otherwise, it would have just lifted it up at a 90 degree angle instead of level. Barely had enough room there with the cab up on the lift, but I got it out. So, we're going to pull the trans off so we can save our trans and transfer case from the parts truck. And we'll put our original motor back on after we swap everything over. So now we have everything swapped over, ready to drop it back in the frame. That's our original engine with our parts truck trans and transfer case. Set it down in there. Get everything lined up. And bolt it all back up. Front drive shaft, trans mounts, motor mounts. Put our cooling system back together, trans cooler lines, antifreeze, oil cooler lines, some power steering lines on there too. Electrical wires had to be routed that we had to take off to get the trans and transfer case out. Now we're ready to drop it back on the frame. Put some go jacks underneath it. These usually work a little better, but because this truck is so heavy and the tires are so big, it didn't quite work as I planned. But it was good enough. Start bolting our cab back up. Shifter cable, emergency brake cable, put our drive shaft back in. Hooking up our DEF tank. I'll put our doors back on. Our fender is back on. All these parts were edged out so we can 
put them back on, paint the outsides when it's all on the truck, put the hood back on. Do a little body work. I'm going to pull the bed off. That's all painted. We can put it back together. Put our headlights in. Put our grill in temporarily just to line up the headlights. Put our back door together. Put our door handle in. I'll move on to the front door, put the door handle in, put the glass in, put the moldings in the mirror on, and we put our fender liner in, put our running boards or steps on, we're going to take the bed off of our original frame. Strip the frame down so we can throw it all away. Scrap it. Pull the rear bumper off, the exhaust, fuel tank, unbolt the rear end. We're going to take the frame down to our storage yard. The exhaust on our truck. Now we can change our bedside. Got a new bedside. Drilling out all our spot welds. Air is a little bit out of the way so we can get to all of our welds inside. Separate all of our panels. I right, heat up the bonding agent. Our bedside's off. Prep all of our welds, grind them all nice and flat. We'll put some weld through primer on there and we're ready for our new one. Set the new one up there and clamp it all up. Move it around however we need. And tack it up there so it doesn't move. Put our tailgate on, make sure we got a nice fit. We don't, so we're going to put a come along in there to move it where we need to. The gap at the top was too wide, so we just pulled it over. When I say the top, I mean the top of the truck, which was actually the bottom because it's upside down. So now that all our gaps are nice, we can weld it all up. Take the tailgate back off, finish welding. Check and make sure everything's lined up. Now we can grind all of our welds down. We'll hand it off to the painter so that he can prime and paint it all.
I'm going to swap out the rear end with the original. Pull the drive shaft out, pull the shocks out. Take the e-brake cables off. Unbolt the U-bolts. I'll roll our original one back under. Line it up, set it down, bolt it all back up. Put a dry shaft back in. And now we're going to put our bed on after the painter painted it. Bolt it all down. Put our tailgate on. Line up our tailgate. Plug in all of our wiring and put our tail light in. It appears I'm not the first one to try that, but it looks like I'll be the last. It's in there. And there's a bunch of hammer marks on the back already. So these are the actual auction pictures. This is how I bought it. So to all the experts that said I should have known what it was going to be like, tell me how you can see the trans and transfer case from here. I'll wait. So after editing the series, I decided I like doing the series much more than these time lapses. So you're probably going to get more series than you are time lapses from now on. So I hope you like the series better with the real time footage. I feel like I can show more detail in less time than I can with the time lapse. So let me know what you guys think. And there it is on Google Maps where it sat for a year when the last people couldn't figure out how to fix it. it didn't take me anywhere near that long to get it done and make some money. They should have just done things the right way. Unfortunately, I didn't get to take it down to see them. Like the video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.